raging and hurting Am I deserving of your Deserving, for me, is lyrically one of the highlights on the album, The Free. Thanks, man. I think it's a song that anyone who listens to, who has been in a relationship, can kind of self-reflect on those moments where you realise you have been in the wrong. Mm. When you're writing a song like this, how much of it is autobiographical? This song was entirely autobiographical. I I was, uh, you know, I was in the wrong and sometimes takes me a minute to see that you know there's a lot of self-loathing you know that comes with uh, that comes with the territory and it's it's a real uh, it's a balancing act between trying to be present and trying to outwardly you know, behave yourself and be nice and be kind and be mindful and all that good stuff. It's balance between that and just being angry and full of self-hatred sometimes. You know, that's I think that's part of the deal for me. Um, and that, the two things, you know, it's like the, the briar and the rose, you know, they're just... They, uh, they don't go well together. And that's what that song is about. I wrote it kind of in one go. You know, sometimes you step away from an encounter and you go, yeah, I'm pretty sure I, uh, pretty sure I screwed that one up. <laughs> I could have done that a little better. <laughs> and yeah, I just wrote it down and, and it became that song. I'd had this riff again for a while. <laughs> Really, it hadn't gone anywhere, you know. That's that's dad gad, D A D G A D, the folk guitar tuning, and that was kind of the only part of the song I had. And when it came to writing the verse, it just happened in one hit, you know. How come you haven't left me? Why'd you never let me go? You know, that's the inner voice talking. When I could feel you yearning for the sight I never show, you always say there's time to learn. So many corners yet to turn, raging and hurting so on you know the the sort of inner voice finds its way into the lyrics sometimes so much of songwriting is informed by your subconscious self and when it comes to the surface you look at it and you go oh that's how I feel okay so that's who I am got it I'm not aware of it until I write a song about it and with this you know it was a little more uh, present I wrote the song knowing exactly how I felt but when I wrote it down I was able to read the words and go so that's why I've got that wrong. Okay, I need to go and apologise. And is a song like that sufficient currency as an apology? Will Has your better half heard that? And when she heard it, did she think, I know exactly what that's about? Yeah. Yeah, it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then at the end, it goes from... Am I deserving of your love to... I am deserving of your love Yeah, 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 yes Deserving of your love 
by the end it's a celebration, you know? It's like, actually, yeah, I'm not a complete write-off. It's gonna be okay. So I wanted that, the end of that song to be climactic and I wanted vocal harmonies. I'm in love with the sound that, that Courtney Hartman makes and the sound that Sarah Jarosz makes. You know, they're two of the best singers I know. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to get them together on a track? And the only guidance I offered was, Courtney, if you could just sing a little bit under me, and Sarah, if you could sing a little bit above me. I didn't want to steer it or orchestrate it too much. And they both sent back vocal files that were completely bang on with each other, recording one in Colorado, one in Nashville. And as far as I know, they haven't ever been in a band together, those two. They just happened to sing completely in time and all the nuances worked. And we put it around me and then I heard it and I went, right, I've got to re-record my vocal, make that a little bit better, actually. I need to, I need to be on point here. So I sang it again and the whole thing, you know, it goes up and up and up and up and then, and then it's over. And it was a really nice moment to have that sort of organic, um, crescendo on the record. We spent a long time tracking the drums for that. Jay Sakura, the drummer, the great drummer, uh, he he spent a lot of time working out what he wanted to do on that and how to serve the song without being over the top. And by the end of it, he was just smashing the drum kit to bits. But we got a really, a really nice warm take out of it. When it dies away, that song, it just goes back to the riff. <laughs> And everything is kind of falling away around it, you know. And I like songs that are like that. I like a song that starts and ends kind of the same and has an arc. And it, by the end, it's really loud and then it gets really quiet again. Straight back into the, you know, it goes widescreen, then it goes into a tight focus and drops. And it's nice that I, li I like songs that do that because you just want to listen to them again. Could have made it three times as long, but we held back. <laughs> Maybe in the live version, there'll be a 15 minute guitar solo that has to go on the end. But for the record, we wanted to keep it, keep it, you know, tidy. I always thought there wasn't enough prog to your live sets. <laughs> a bit more Rick Wakeman. Yeah. 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 A 20 minute, 40 minute Hammond organ solo. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. 